Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls on her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall, <clears throat> then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Lord God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time begins, to, it belongs to Him and all the ages. To Him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world Set Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, 
destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that turned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, Accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dim by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. You may extinguish your candles.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth 
of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Make 
the grass grow for the cattle and the plants to serve their needs. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the things of the earth. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord, my soul. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonder and wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning. Except at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. 
At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his truth. And rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him, my Father's God, and I give him praise. Let us sing to The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. The deeps hide them, they sank like a stone. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Your right hand. In its power, your right hand, Lord, has sheltered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You will lead them. And plant them on your mountain, the place, O oh Lord, where you have made your home. The sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made, the Lord will reign 
whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day. For what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples a leader and commander for the peoples. So you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their ways and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. strength 
Christ and glorious deeds, make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was unclean. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. 
then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. changing power and eternal life. Look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down has been raised up. What had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being. Who lives 
lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus 
were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But we, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. 
shine like the lights to the world as you hold on to the When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Oh, dear brothers and sisters, he is risen. Jesus is risen indeed. Now, from the time of Abraham, every generation believed in the resurrection of the dead. But it was only wishful thinking until Jesus came to make it a reality. If we could only understand even a small fraction of what Jesus did for us, we would be so incredibly overwhelmed with gratitude and praise. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus is indeed the pivotal point in human history that changed everything. Before Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, we had no hope, no future. Humanity was doomed. But Jesus Christ came to set us free from the bondage and the power of sin and death. It's not just some people, not just the holy rollers that he came for. No, he came for you and me and everyone, even the worst of sinners. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For our sake he, God, made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so even while we were yet sinners, Jesus, out of love, came to free us. Now the price of our redemption was so incredibly great you know, every time we sin, 
It's like we betray Jesus, giving the devil more ammunition to make his case against us. But Jesus, having paid the price for our sins, has now risen and taken his seat at the right hand of God the Father. He is now our advocate with the Father, defending us against the great accuser, who is the devil. And so Jesus' death and resurrection truly happened. This is foundational. In 1 Corinthians, St. Paul elaborates, and as we heard in the readings, if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile, and you're still in your sins. And we know, however, that even the apostles had trouble believing in the resurrection, although Jesus told them before the Passion that it would happen. Mary Magdalene ran to tell the disciples that she saw Jesus risen, but they wouldn't believe her. And when the apostles told Thomas later about Jesus appearing to them, he too would not believe them until he touched the wounds in Jesus' hands and his side. Well, today, there may be many things that we may find hard to believe about our faith. It may be the resurrection or even the Eucharist, which we're told is the real body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. August 15th, 1996, a miracle occurred in Buenos Aires in Argentina, where Pope Francis, then Bishop Bergoglio, was auxiliary bishop. During an evening mass at St. Mary's Church, a discarded host that had been defiled was found at the back of the church. The priest, Father Alejandro Pezet, placed it in a container of water and put it away in the tabernacle in the chapel, waiting for it to dissolve. Eleven days later, it was found that the host had grown and had turned into a bloody substance. Later, under the direction and approval of Bishop Bergoglio, it was then photographed and sent to several different places to be scientifically analyzed. And one of them being an independent lab at Columbia University. Now, not knowing where the substance from the host came from, they determined that it was real flesh and blood taken from a living human heart. And while using the latest technology, they concluded that because of certain characteristics of the blood, the person from whom the substance had been taken had experienced severe pain and stress. Now, not only that, but that same person later on had experienced something euphoric. And so this explains the resurrection following our Lord's painful crucifixion and death. And so, brothers and sisters, this miracle, along with the countless other miracles of the Eucharist, proves that in Holy Communion, we receive the real body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus at the moment of his resurrection. Our Eucharistic experience is a continuation of our baptism experience. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4, St. Paul states, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. The Eucharist is what gives us this newness of life in Christ. And we become transformed with his resurrection power. The Eucharist doesn't represent Jesus. It is Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, the real deal. 
And yes, we can listen to the Word of God on TV at home every Sunday. And for some of us in nursing homes or in prisons or whatever, that's all we can do. And God bless you. But for many who really have no excuse not to show up for Mass every Sunday, you're missing out on one of the most important things. How many of our brothers and sisters in poorer parts of this world are without priests and would give anything? They'd walk for miles or days in order to receive the Eucharist, while some in our midst treat it as if it's nothing. O ye of little faith. And Jesus said, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. It can't be any more clear than that. Our bodies need food, yes, in order to live. And our souls need spiritual food as well. We are a community as the body of Christ. We get our nourishment by reading and hearing the Word of God together in order for our faith to increase, yes. But also, it's so important that we receive Jesus' resurrection power in the Eucharist in order to become all that we were meant to be in Christ Jesus. So let's live this. Let's believe and treasure this by receiving Jesus reverently and worthily. There's no need to despair or to lose hope. As long as we can receive Jesus in the Word and in the Eucharist, we have everything.
chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Jesus, Son of the living God, Christ, hear us. Graciously hear us. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your Spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, 
your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism, all those whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to new health of innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. Catherine Russell, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and prince of darkness? Catherine Russell, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Catherine Roslin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Catherine Rosslyn, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ that you may have everlasting life.
have been enlightened by Christ, walk always as a child of the light, and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. May the Lord, when the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the past of history, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may rise with him to newness of life. Now that we have completed our life and observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism, when we rejected Satan and his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Dear friends, I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the ladder of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God?
Dear friends, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this day, you will be one with us at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord receives you to the Catholic His love and kindness has led you here. So that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this sacrament. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ, and you have become members of Christ and of his priest in you. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. The Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost, and given by them and their successors to the baptism. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that He will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation, to strengthen them with His gifts, and to help them to be more like Christ the Son of God.
In the joy of this Easter night, we turn in prayer to our Heavenly Father, who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. The response is, and let your cry come unto thee, and it will be sung. We pray that the church may manifest in word and action the reality of Christ's triumph over sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. We pray that all of us may be renewed in our fidelity to our Catholic faith as we celebrate the great mystery of the Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. We pray for all those received into Christ's church through the sacrament of initiation, especially our newly baptized and confirmed Catholics at the Basilica of Our Lady. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. 
We pray that peace and justice will prevail throughout all the world, especially in the Holy Land and Ukraine, and we ask God's blessing upon all who strive for justice in our world. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto We pray that those who continue to suffer from religious persecution, especially in the Middle East, China, Africa, and Nicaragua, may know that they are surrounded by the prayers of their faithful Christians. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let our heart come We pray that all those who are sick or suffering whether in body, mind, or soul, especially any suffering members of our parish family, will find comfort and consolation in the loving mercy of the risen Lord. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And We pray that the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially our deceased loved ones and parishioners, and on those whose faith is known to God alone. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And We ask our Blessed Lady, whose heart was filled with joy at the good news of the Resurrection, to join her prayers to ours as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 499, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, 499.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in Paschal mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Douglas our Bishop, Wayne his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, 
in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance 
and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Peace 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Our communion hymn is number 6.7 in the red celebrate and song hymnal, our blessing cup, 6.7.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a great debt of gratitude owed to a good many people. Our Easter liturgies uh, never just happen. It takes a lot of behind-the-scenes work from a lot of people and a lot of on-the-scene work from a lot of people. So a big thank you, first of all, to our choir and our musicians and to our altar servers. They're the on-the-scene people, most of whom might as well have moved in here over the last week. Thank you very much. Then the behind-the-scenes people, thank you to our decorating team, the catering team, who, by the way, have prepared a wonderful reception for you downstairs. Please do not finish the wine before I get there. Uh, to our parish staff, also thank you to our ushers and lectors and extraordinary ministers, uh, to our, uh, our young adult group, especially our young adult Scola, who throughout Lent have been uh, singing Compline and Benediction, uh, if you want to join them, we are going to be doing it through the octave of Easter as well. So thank you to all of you. The novena to uh, Divine Mercy continues at St. Joseph's Parish here in Guelph throughout the week. And next Sunday, the Divine Mercy celebrations will happen at St. Joseph's Church. I believe confessions begin at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Holy Hour at 2, and of course, the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3. A big thank you and a, a welcome once again to the Sisters of Our Lady Immaculate. Um, they were the ones that just sang the praises of Our Lady in its Easter antiphon for the very first time this year. Uh, many of you may not know that the sisters were actually founded here at the Church of Our Lady, and their name actually comes from this church. A former pastor of this parish, Father Lloyd Ryan, along with Mother Mary Josephine and Mother St. Henry, were the founders of the Sisters of Our Lady Immaculate. And sisters, it is always a pleasure to have you here with us. This week, the lamps at the Regina Chaley Shrine burn in loving memory of the deceased members and for the intentions of the living members of the Basilica of Our Lady Parish. And finally, on behalf of Bishop Ustricki, Father Bill, Deacon Quinto, our seminarian Joseph, and the parish team, I would like to wish all of you and all of your loved ones a very blessed Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Recessional hymn is number 497, Be Joyful, Mary, Heavenly Queen, 497.